Hi everybody, it's Brian here. Um, this has been a while um, coming. I haven't done a look at a Game Pro issue I have in a long time. Actually, it's been since August last year was when I did issue number 64. Uh, so today I'm looking, or this evening I'm looking at Game Pro issue number uh, 64 for November 1994. Um, this is one that I really, really remember. And one of the reasons is because I remember Beavis and Butthead on the front. Uh, I loved uh, I loved Beavis and Butthead uh, growing up during the mid-90s. Um, and I also had um, Donkey Kong Country in here. And I believe there was something on Final Fantasy 3, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's take a look here. Get it in the frame here so we can maybe zoom in here. That's too much. So here we go. We have an ad from Mickey Mania. An ad for Clay Fighter. Very cool looking ad with all the claymation. Very nice. I actually never played Clay Fighter 2. Even though I own the, own one, the first one. Attention 32X and 3DO system users. Check out the December issue of GamePro Magazine for a special offer. Offer only at software, etc. I remember software, etc. So you got your typical ads, table, contents in this issue. You have Samurai Showdown art contest winners, the making of Primal Rage on the location of Supreme Warrior. Prepare to fight. Uh, Digital Pictures goes to the source for Supreme Warrior, its new kung fu fighting game. Street Fighter the movie update. And Supreme Warrior, I remember, if you can see, it was like a full motion video fighting game, which was really unique. Uh, it didn't really play well, when I remember. Um, I did play it, I believe, at a friend's house uh, who had a 3DO. Um, and Pro Strategy Guides, you have um, Primal Rage Part 2 Guide. And in Fighters Edge, you have Mortal Kombat 2, exclusive, exclusive combos for each character. Here's this great ad for Final Fantasy 3. I just love, you know, it's going to take it out and hang it up. Um, it doesn't seem fair, does it? And it has all the uh, monsters, some of the monsters, it looks like um, right here. You have Ifrit, I think Ultras, and I remember that guy with the wheel. I forgot his name. Wheels on his hands. So for Genesis, some of the games we'll go through. Earthworm Jim, Sonic and Knuckles, Contra Hard Corpse. Uh, you have Knights and of the Sky, Barbie's Vacation Adventure, Baby's Day Out, Bubsy 2, Lethal Enforcers, for Sega CD, Star Blazer, Super Nintendo, Demon's Crest, Lion Kings, Indiana Jones, Greatest Adventures, Contra Hard Corps, as I said, uh, 3DO, you got Road Rash, one of the better, best games for the 3DO, I love that game, um, still looking for it though, and yes, World Player's Realm had Final Fantasy 3, so that's why this is a very memorable issue, because um, I had Final Fantasy 3 during this, when I got this issue. And the strategy guide was very nice to have. Game Genie Codes, and here's another ad for Final Fantasy 3, uh, who says life is fair, and you see all the monsters that were in the previous page, and they're all disintegrated by Mog right here. Um... It, this the yeah, Final Fantasy 3 was a big game for me growing up, and that's one of the reasons why I remember this issue so well. At the 3DO. Got some more letters from people here. The Super Game Boy. Um, in your June issue, you discussed the Super Game Boy. Can you use any kind of Game Genie with it? Nick McKinovic. No. Neither the SNES Game Genie nor the Game Boy Game Genie will work with Nintendo's new unit. What does the X stand for in Mega Man X? It's not the Roman numeral 10, which is a common mistake. It's the letter X. Lauren Thornton, the spokesperson for Capcom, says that Mega Man has taken on a new persona called X in his latest 16-bit game. He's on. He's not the same Mega Man you're, you've come to know and love in the 8-bit world. The new robot resembles the original Mega Man, but that's. But but there are enough differences that give a new. New design. 
new design nation designation, hence the X, Thornton says. Capcom will continue the Mega Man X line with Mega Man X2, which is due any second now, and will also continue the regular Mega Man line. Here's a, so that's interesting to know. As a kid, you didn't know that. Um, I was confused about that too, how it just changed to Mega Man X. Um, and here's the ending of Street Fighter 2. I remember with Ken getting married. Here's a neat ad for, I believe, Soul Blazer, or no, Illusion of Gaia. Um, you have with the sword here, I remember this ad. Some more artwork. Um, actually, one person, actually, in one of my earlier reviews, I think, um, mentioned, it might have been in Nintendo Power, but he mentioned he saw his um, art in here. Maybe I'm thinking of something, but he said he saw his art in here, and he let me know, which is kind of cool. Um, so maybe if somebody is looking up for this issue and you see your art here, um, there you go. Here's some cool Metroid art. Earth 2. I don't remember that. Sunday's on NBC. This is the same where I showed an art contest, so you have more art for it. Hot at the Arcades, Cruise in USA. I never played it in the arcades, but I did play it on the N64. Expect the Unexpected, Wolverine and Adamantium's Rage. For the Genesis and Super Nintendo. Darkstalkers, the Night Warriors at the arcades. Um, there you go. Uh, kind of like a horror fighting game. Atari Jaguar, do the math. Katsumi Ninja, not a great game. Primal Rage. And here's an ad for Donkey Kong Country. Uh, Play It Loud, that was Nintendo's campaign back then. More edgier ads to compete with probably Sega. Donkey Kong Country, you won't believe it either. And you talk about 32 megabit monster of a game. Um, hold on to your bananas. This is going to put hair on your chest and maybe even your back. It's Donkey Kong Country, the first home video game entirely created on the supercomputer of SGI. The same ones used for that Jurassic Park flick. This is a big game at the time. I never played it until much later. Um, probably in my 20s. Um, I did play Donkey Kong Country too, though. My friend had that. And I just beat Donkey Kong Country uh, last year. Inside the PlayStation. Give a little look at the motherboard here. Tell your parents if they get you Donkey Kong Country, you'll put on a clean t-shirt. Or a clean shirt. Pre-purchase Donkey Kong Country at Babbage's and get a free t free t-shirt when you pick up your game. Echo the Tides of Time, Journey Below the Surface. It's on Game Gear, too. Hmm, interesting. And here we go, Beavis and Butthead. I was excited for this game, and I didn't play it um, um, for a while, actually. Probably much later. I don't know why I never played it. Probably just never saw it for, for rent. Yeah, during this time I was watching Beavis and Butthead and Headbangers Ball. I was in the mid '90s and playing Super Nintendo. That was a big part of my growing up. WWF Raw is War. 
zero tolerance on the Genesis. The Lion King, 24 meg Sega Genesis to Super Nintendo. Um, I'm, I'm think the Lion King on the Genesis and Super Nintendo, I have them both, and I haven't played them in a while. I don't remember if they're different games like Aladdin, like one's different than the other, um, or they're just straight ports. I'm not 100% sure. See the Lion King this holiday season at theater near, near you. Supreme Warrior. This is that full motion video fighting game. Yo, dude, get a clue. Talking about all these games here. Contra Hard Corps. Fighters History. Star Wars Rebel Assault. Street Fighter movie update. I was really excited for this. And I actually like the Street Fighter movie, even though it's kind of cheesy. Oh, and there's a continuation of that um, ad for hints for games. And each company had hint lines you could call. Never actually called those. Here's the interactor. You strapped it to yourself, and it would like shake your body. I don't know how well it worked. Uh, like when you hit something um, in the game, it would like shake, give feedback, probably with bass or something. Blackthorn. Earthworm Jim on the Genesis. Look at that. Perfect scores. Song and Knuckles, another perfect with the classic game pro guy who looks like he stuck his finger in the light socket. Contra Hard Corps for the Genesis, the only Contra game released on the Genesis. Very different from the other ones. Um, you had, I think, three playable characters in it. Um, see, they gave um, very good scores for it. Everything a 4.5 except Fun Factor, they gave a 5. And they sum it up by saying, if you haven't memorized the Contra mantra, kill them all and let God sort them out, then you may not be ready for this intense title. If you think you're hard enough for the cores, corpse, then by all means pick up a stick and start firing. Sega CD Model 2. Pitfall of the Mayan Adventure for the Genesis. Also came out for the Super Nintendo and 32X, I believe. Here's an ad for Konami. Mind disinfectant video games, cuts through boredom, toxic levels of excitement. Uh, 32 bladder loosening ulcers, one quart. <laughs> That's a pretty neat ad. And here's this ad for Contra Horcorps, I remember. It's like a meat grinder. Maybe I should have played checkers instead. They're kind of referring to how hard this game is. Lethal Enforcers 2. Batman and Robin on the Super Nintendo. It's a beat-em-up. Um, I'm looking for this game. I can never find it. I see the one for the Genesis, which is a different, a different game than this one. Actually, the store I like to go to now, they have it for the Genesis for 10 bucks. Urban Strike for the Genesis. The Strike games, um, I never played. I heard they were really good on the Genesis. I'm not as good as on the Super Nintendo, though. There's Desert Strike, Urban Strike, and Jungle Strike, I believe. I don't know what order they came out in. I think Desert Strike was first. And Captain Commando, I'm actually looking for this game. Is um, I, I love beat-em-ups in the 16-bit era. Commit Scumocide. Top Gear 3000. Zero Tolerance on the Genesis. Rock and Roll Racing on the Genesis. Um, you gave it kind of 3.5 for everything except 4.0 for Fun Factor. Mickey Mania, The Timeless Adventures of Mickey Mouse. I really liked it. 
It's rare that you'll go wrong with a Disney title. They appear to gamers of all ages, and the beauty of the artwork is certainly timeless. If Mickey's not on your not your thing, you won't appreciate this cart. But if you liked any of Mickey's other games, you won't miss you won't miss with Mickey Mania. Here's Sparkster on the Genesis. Very fun game. This is a sequel to Rocket Knight Adventures. Uh, it was also on the Super Nintendo as well, which I just recently picked up that game. I haven't played it yet. There are different games. They play differently now, from what I, I've heard. Jurassic Park Rampage Edition. Never played this. Here's an ad for Demon Crest. A very fun game. Um, haven't played until way later. Actually, last year I actually found a cartridge and played it. Very nice ad, though. There's Firebrand. He was in the Ghouls and Ghosts uh, games. Bubsy 2. He's a Lethal and Fortress 2 Gunfighters. Win two tickets to the exclusive Hollywood movie premiere of Street Fighter. Boogerman for Genesis. Got very good reviews. 4.5s and 4.0s for control. 4.0 for sound and 4.5 for graphics and fun factor. They're saying, take you up and down, left and right, and in and out of distant areas using... using... Um, uh, using noses and toilets as transportation. Boogerman is a game to play. It doesn't stink and it looks beautiful. You'll have a blast. It was also on the Super Nintendo. Radical Rex. Pack Attack. Marco. Double Dragon movie, I've never seen it. Knights of the Sky, Beethoven, Barbie's Vacation Adventure, Baby's Day Out, all very bad reviews here. Here's this Philips CDI ad. Um, during this time in the 90s, it was about multimedia. Every, a lot of stuff was about multimedia and CDs and full motion video and what you could fit on a CD. Hence the Sega CD, 3DO, Philips CDI, those multimedia systems. Um, like, um, well, C Sega CD had a lot of full motion video too. Clay Fighter for the Genesis. Star Wars Chess for the Sega CD. Look at this ad. The average male reaches his sexual peak at age 17 and lives to the age of 73. So what do you want to do with the 56 years in between? This is a 3DO ad. Demon's Crest on the Super Nintendo. You see they gave it 4.5 for graphics, 3.0 for sound, 4.0 for control, and 4.5 for fun factor. And they say... Monsters use simple swoop and shoot attacks reminiscent of super goals and ghosts, and few obstacles are super challenging. But the variety but the varied graphics and strategic depth are so intriguing you may not mind fan mind. Fans of Arthur's original adventure surely won't, and neither will fans of good action adventure games. Demon's Crest rises to the top. The Lion King on the Super Nintendo. Graphics and sound got fives. Control 4.0. Fun Factor 3. Lots of challenge. Lion King's games play just... <clears throat> Lots of challenge. Lion King's gameplay just isn't on par in pace or consistent with past classics like Disney's Aladdin and Jungle Book games. <clears throat> Despite its drawbacks, though, the game is worth playing just for the visuals and sound. And if you stick it out to recapture Pride Rock, 
if you're really king of the jungle. Indiana Jones Greatest Adventures. Very similar gameplay to Super Star Wars. Got 4.5s across the board, except for graphics and Fun Factor, which got 4.0. Here's an ad for Blockbuster. Beat it. Okay, you got it. Attempt it. Curse it. Go with it. Beat it. Master it. Conquer it. Board with it. Go to Blockbuster and rent the hottest new game again. So it's a circle. Earthworm Jim on the Super Nintendo. It didn't get quite as good as reviews on the Super Nintendo. Sound was knocked off a half a point. Fun factor, a half a point. These control flaws are a minor inconvenience in an otherwise great game. Earthworm Jim is just is just what the side-scrolling fans are looking for. There's the Mega Mouse. I didn't even know that Genesis had a mouse. Shaq Fu, you see, and it, it didn't get cremated. I mean, people, it wasn't a ter people act like it's the worst game ever. It's not the worst game ever. It's just very, eh, me, average. You see, got 4.0s across the board, sound 4.5s. They say Shaq Fu is not going to F Fu Street Fighter faithfully, but he leads them into a good fight. He's definitely got the stuff. They, they didn't hate it. Mickey Mania for the Super Nintendo. It was in the Genesis previously a few pages back. Saturday Night Slam Masters for the Genesis. I didn't know it was on the Genesis. Wild Guns on the Super Nintendo. See, they gave it um, very good scores, except for sound. They knocked off a, it's a 3.5. There's plenty of rootin' tootin' shootin' in this Western sci-fi. Thumbs apparent. Thumb sprainer. Good graphics, big bosses, and fast action make this cart a hot shot. If you master similar shooters and you've got an itch, itchy trigger finger, don't go thinking you're immediately going to be the fastest gun in Wild Guns. Wild West. Even on the easy setting, this one's a decent challenge, but it's worth staying with. Wild Guns packs a fun wallop. Here's a Primal Rage strategy guide. Um, can't really say I've played Primal Rage much. Very interesting, though. It intrigued me. Um, dinosaurs, which I love. Fighting games. Together is one. That's, it seems to be a winning combination. It just never caught on. I'm sure there's people out there who really like it, though. Sparkster on the Super Nintendo. You see it got pretty good reviews. Except for sound, a 3.5, and control, a 3.5. With commendable graphics and sound, plus a lot of the Gee Whiz special effects from the original Genesis version, this is one possum that doesn't play dead. Sparkster isn't as fresh as the original Rocket Knight. The play control should have been improved, and new weapons would have been nice. Still, Rocket Knight rookies will do well with Sparkster. Ghoul Patrol. This is the sequel to Maniac, or not Maniac, but sequel to Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. Good ghouls, good graphics, good fun. Ghoul Patrol is the closest you can get to the acclaimed Zombies Ain't My Neighbors, and it's a worthy successor. Take on those nasty things that go bump in the night and have a good time to boot. Lucky for you, you'll run into zombies while you're on Ghoul Patrol. If it sounds like Zombies Ate My Neighbors, looks like Zombies Ate My Neighbors, and plays like Zombies Ate My Neighbors, it must be zombies. JVC, however, says no claim to the Zombies Ate My Neighbors mantle, even though Ghoul Patrol's Zam 2 Gear Up Zomb Zool Patrol's Zombies Ate My Neighbors 2 gear, gear Up Zombies fans for another ghoul-busting good time. 
The Incredible Hulk. Power Rangers was really big then. Street Racer. Never played that. Jim sleeps well knowing kids got their money's worth. Earthworm Jim on the Super Nintendo and Genesis coming October. Arrow the Acrobat 2. Tetris 2. Yogi Bear and Radical Rex. Software Etc. ad. Have the Horde, which starred Kirk Cameron. I uh, had a friend who had this on the 3D. It was an interesting game. WCW Super Brawl Wrestling. Hammerlock Wrestling. $10 coupon off uh, Troy Aikman Football at Sears. Offer good through November 30th, 1994. Yeah, it expired. It's a little old. Bonkers and Super Godzilla, both mm, average. Those are for the Super Nintendo. Here's an ad, another Play It Loud 90s era of atti attitude for Nintendo. Um, it's for Super Punch Out. You see um, people's yearbook pictures here. Um, introducing the Super Nintendo NES Punch Out graduating class of 1994. Arrow Fighters um, kind of got average reviews. Mortal Kombat 2 trading cards. Collect all secret moves to prepare for combat. Available mid September 1994. I didn't know about that. Road Rash on the 3DO. Look at that. And that game deserves every one of those because it's amazing. I think it had some good mu licensed music in it. Soundgarden was in it. Um, great, funny, cheesy full motion video and just a blast to play. Fans of the Genesis version won't believe their eyes and ears. This souped up Road Rash. Will knock the socks off. Will knock the socks off experienced thrasher, rashers, and new racers alike. Change the way you play. Here's an ad for the 32X. Is next. Well, in the dark on 3DO. Ascii made um, a lot of third party, they were a company that made a lot of joysticks and controllers for Genesis and Super Nintendo. They actually made the Super Advantage too, which I have yet to use or see. Still looking out for one, here's Balls. Balls out. <laughs> Sports Pages. Here's an ad for Rayman. So I've got no arms, no legs, and I've got attitude in your f in your face this fall. Lufia and the Fortress of Doom for Genesis. It actually never came out for Genesis, coming December 1994. So this is the very piece of history. Um, yeah, as far as I know, Lufia Two never, or Lufia and the Fortress of Doom never came out for Genesis. Lord of the Rings for the Super Nintendo. Here it is. This is the Final Fantasy review. You can see it got fives across the board. Final Fantasy 3 review. This is, it got fives across the board except for graphics 4.5. Um, Final Fan the Final F Fan the Fantasy wasn't as final as you thought. Square Soft's back with Final Fantasy 3 and without a doubt it's one of the finest fantasies you'll see this year. I had to read this tons of times. One of my all time favorite games on the Super Nintendo. Edgar, Locke, Celis, Bannon, Shadow. Shadow is really cool. I just loved him in the game. 
Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel. I'm still looking for that game. Go back to the Final Fantasy 3 review. Um, a game this good to look at and this fun to play has more going for it than just better program program programming. Final Fantasy 3 definitely adds depth to the super to the superior gameplay of its predecessors, Final Fantasy 2 and Secret of Mana, and it actually improves on those games. Characters, plot lines, and multiple choice scenarios all combine to form one fantastic game. RPG enthusiasts, pen and paper dungeon masters, and hardcore role players will all be thrilled with this new adventure. It's a good thing this fantasy isn't final. Yogi Bear. Oh, Beethoven for the Game Boy. This has to be one of the lowest scores I've ever seen GamePro give something. 2.0 for graphics, 1.5 and 1.5 for sound, 1.0 for control. Must control terrible and fun factor of 1.5. Beethoven the movie appealed to kids and so might this game for a little while anyway. Unfortunately, the fun, the first the fr frustration controls, frustrating controls make this much too hard for anyone to handle. Roll over Beethoven and tell the dog catcher the news. Shaq Fu ad. X-Band, this is a um, online service. Uh, you connected a modem into your cartridge slot for the Super Nintendo, I, th I think the Genesis, and you could play online over your phone line. Now you're playing for real. Start in November. If you live in New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Dallas, or Atlanta, your Genesis is about, so it was for the Genesis, too, is about to be radically expanded. Rest of the country and Super Nintendo S NES players, your turn is next. Um, some tips for Mortal Kombat 2. Excalibur 2097, I'm looking for that game too. Here's an ad for Boogerman. I always love these ads that would take up the bottom multiple panels, almost like a comic panel. See his booger sticking out. There's a piece of popcorn, a fly. He's picking it with a quarter. Coming soon, Boogerman. Codes for Game Genie, Space Ace, Fighter's Edge Mortal Kombat 2, by far my favorite Mortal Kombat, here they're advanced they're advertising the Super Advantage for Super Nintendo, the only joystick with the muscle to get through Donkey Kong Country, or anything else for that matter. I like the look of that joystick. I want to buy and get that so bad, but I never see it anywhere. Darkstalkers the Night Warriors, an arcade fighting strategy guide. Multiplayer adap adapter, the Tribal Tap. TV Golf for the Genesis, $129. Hmm, interesting. I guess it was a golf game that you actually swung it like Wii Sports Golf. We had an actual club. I 
I just noticed the label on the back of my Super Nintendo cart games packs that reads, This game must be cleaned regularly. Use the Super NES cleaning kit only. Should I buy an SNES cleaning kit, or is Nintendo just trying to sucker me into buying stuff I don't need? I've had some of my SNES games for a long time, and I've never had a problem. Hey, answer, the watchdog says, Regular cleaning of your game packs is a must. The frequency depends on gameplay, but but it's usually about once every two weeks. Um, proper maintenance will extend the life of your game and your game system. As for ex exclusively using Nintendo game cleaning kits, that's a personal choice. The advisory on the back of the game pack only recommends the Super NES cleaning kits are also the Super NES kit. Cleaning kits are also available from Doc and Naki. guy's mad because you just bought TMN2, TM, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, so he paid 50, 60 bucks for it, and he beat it in a half hour. If I try to resell the game, I will only get 10 or 15 dollars for it. Are dealers ripping kids off? This guy says, gamers, games are designed for players of different abilities. In one player mode, this game is rather easy for advanced players. If you're not sure about game about a game though the best thing to do is rent it before you buy it. and here's Donkey Kong Country uh, pro shots of preview of Donkey Kong Country this is a big time for the Super Nintendo this game I believe Behind Mario World is the best-selling Super Nintendo game of its generation. Super Return of the Jedi. Robotrek. This is an RPG I picked up last year. The Masters of Role Players Adventures at Enix is ready to rock you into the far reaches of outer space for a one-player RPG with a science fiction theme. A band of hackers has invaded Rococo, Rococo, and you must save your home world by figuring out what they want in a nice twist on a standard RPG. Elements, members, elements, members of your party include robots instead of wizards. You don't heal them, you clean them. During play, you maneuver using the overhead view field in world maps and enter into battle with a side view. Battle screen. The small cartoon style sprites resemble Secret of Mana. This is an advertisement for Donkey Kong Country. Another one that looks like a review or something, but it's, you see down here they write advertisement. Very tricky. How they do that. Artie Lightfoot. Have that for the um, Super Nintendo, Lion King for Game Gear, Dragon's Lair 2 for CDI. Lunar and the Silver Star Saga, Silver Star for the Sega CD. I have yet to play that game. I've heard it's very good though. where you could order your games from Chips and Bits. Typical in the back of every Game Pro magazine at this time. You could order games from here. See prices were around 50, 60, 52. There's Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Safari for 29. Wild Guns for 54. 
Fantasy Star 4. $79 for Fantasy Star 4. Because it was a big cart. It's one thing I remember games, especially in the N64 era, I think I spent 79 bucks on games. I think Doom 64 I spent 80 bucks on. Or I should say my mom did. System Wars Heat Up in Japan, NEC FX. The BAX will support two infrared remote controls. Bandai BAX, never heard of that. Sega, Sony, Nintendo 3DO, and NEC may command much of the new system spotlight, but they should keep their eyes on the dark horse of the bunch, Bandai. The Bandai BAX is sort of hard to explain, not because it's purple, so that's a hard to explain too, but because it isn't a dedicated game machine. Built as the one machine for one family multimedia here in Japan, the BAX will emphasize CD movies, CD music, karaoke, and interactive videos instead of traditional video games formats. Hmm. Never heard of it. Guardian War for the 3DO and RPG that's pretty decent. Three DO powers up. Ah, the elusive M2 accelerator add-on for the 3DO. In an effort to remain competitive with upcoming hardware entries, the 3DO company has announced plans for the M2 Accelerator, an add-on to the 3DO multiplayer. The Accelerator will increase the machine's performance from 32 bits to 64 bit. The plans call for the development of a chip with a custom PowerPC microprocessor coupled with multi-graphics and sound processors. IBM and Motorola will assist in the development by engineering and manufacturing chips. And this never came out. I remember my friend who had a 3DO was all excited for this. But sadly, did not take off. Did not come out. Now oh, what's this? Here's uh, KDK in Pittsburgh. Baseball on strike not. With the recent Major League Baseball strike, a big hole opened up in many sports fans' lives. Pittsburgh's WK Pittsburgh's KDKA TV2 has been World Series base has been using World Series Baseball 94 on the Sega Genesis to play out the Pirates' scheduled games. The game highlights are then shown on the evening news broadcast, mixed in with video clips from actual pirate games, like the managers commenting on the team's performance. Sports producer Frank Wilson says some of the viewers think the idea is silly, but others say it com compensates for not having real baseball highlights. TV station Skitty K TV in Pit 2 in Pittsburgh has its inter interns playing Pirates games on the Genesis and shows the results on newscasts. Meanwhile, Nintendo is wagering its own baseball campaign with a Nintendo No Strike Baseball League. Its game counselors have been playing the entire baseball schedule on Ken Griffey Jr.'s Presents Major League Baseball, mm. that po then posting the results on an 800 number that, <laughs> that, remain, that the media can call to nab the details. The scores can then be passed on to the public in newscasts and newspaper sports sections. I had no idea they do that. And I just read that because I'm, I live in Pittsburgh, and that's funny that the sports actor and him are still around. I don't know about her, but I think those two at least are still doing the news. Mega Man cartoon on the way. You may have caught a recent introduction of the Mega Man cartoon, Prono News Game Pro, March 1994, which is licensed from Nintendo. Here are some characters from the show. They have Mega Man or Rock Roll and Dr. Wily.
And we come to the end of another issue of Game Pro Magazine. This is number 64 for November 1994. Um, it was a thick one. Um, and boy, this video has gone on for 45 minutes right now. But I want to thank you for all sticking around, if you have stuck around. And until next time, we will pick up with issue number 65 and in coming into the end of the year in December 1994. So everybody take care. Bye.